Hello and welcome to another episode of Side with V. My name is Hui and in this marriage series, Dr. Vo and I will be putting out videos about skills, mindsets, tools, values that you need to improve your marriage. And in today's episode, we will discuss five helpful tools for marriage. And this episode is meant to be a quick crash course, a 10,000 feet survey, and we will talk about in greater details about these tools in later videos. Let's go. The first thing you want to do is to communicate openly. There are five points in this push in the communication. First, you want to talk to your partner. If you can't say what you want to say, take the time to think about it and write it down. We often tell other people about the situation rather than our spouse who is directly involved. This doesn't solve any problems. Understand that when you are opening doors to opening to communicating with your partner, you are also allowing the other person the opportunity to openly communicate with you. The second thing is to get good at asking for permission. Discuss with your spouse the decisions you're trying to make and communicate with them. This is a demonstration of you being considerate and respectful. You're empowering your spouse to be able to agree or not agree to something you want. Third thing you want to do is ask for what you want. Other people, no matter how long they've spent with you, cannot read your mind. If you don't communicate your desires and expectations, nobody will know. Asking for what you want helps your partner understand you better and they can understand how to meet your needs better. The other person is then responsible for, based on their own needs and desire, to give you their response. And this may be a no or a yes. The next point follows that directly, which is practice saying no and taking no for an answer. In order to truly show someone that you love them, you have to be able to say no when it is necessary. The level of comfort you have in a relationship to be able to say no is the measure of the love and strength of your relationship. When someone makes a request, ask yourself if this is something that is realistic for you to do or will it cause you major inconveniences or even harm. When you first learn the skill, it may be helpful just to say, give me a few days or give me a few hours to think about it and let me get back to you. This allowed you to get enough time to be deliberate and, in, and make an informed decision if it happens to be an important decision to you. Tool number two, give space. Allow the other person to have their own interests. Expecting to be doing everything together at all time is unrealistic. To a certain extent, we are expect, expected to lose a, a little bit of our own identity to integrate into a new family unit. However, it is still important to maintain your individuality and give each other time and space to pursue your own hobbies and grow as a person. Like join a women's group, join a men's group, a hobby group. This is more of a women problem than a men problem due to a sense of being selfish uh, and irresponsible if wives prioritizing caring for themselves. And this is a common social pressure that wives face. So husband, you should be mindful to support your wives to pursue their interests in personal growth because happy wife, happy life. That's right. You want to embrace changes. That's tool number three. People change, you change. Learn to accept people's imperfections because nobody's perfect. Um, we are quick to point out problems when we disagree with each other. And so the thing that we want to focus on is learn to accept that your spouse and accept their imperfections because to some extent you have the same flaws. Make some more constructive comments. Tell them what you want rather than what you don't like. Okay. There's a funny story, a professor um, in uh, psychology once said, you know, his wife was married to four different men and all four are him. The beauty and challenge of marriage is that you and your spouse learn to love one another as you grow and change over time. 
Accepting change also means that you have to be able to let go of old grudges in the past. Not giving your spouse a chance to grow and change is a mistake. When you give your spouse the benefit of the doubt that they are changing and growing, it's just maybe not at a time frame or in a pace you want. You're giving them the benefit to change and accepting their imperfections. Tool number four: focus on yourself. When there's tension in your marriage and relationship, it's easy to focus on what the other person should be doing or that what they are not doing, and it's incredibly hard to focus on your own responsibility and contribution to the issue. But the problem is that we cannot change the other person. We can only change ourselves. What I usually tell couples that I work with is to draw a circle around themselves individually and ask, "What are my responsibilities in this situation? What can I do to make it better? Take responsibilities, even if it is two percent." When you model taking responsibilities, the other person will soon change their attitude. Our last tip is get good at fighting. Some researchers will even go as far as saying arguments are actually healthy when you do it right. Every conflict is an opportunity to deepening the relationship. I always say tension promotes growth. Here is how you want to fight. First thing you want to do is identify and validate your spouse's emotions and perspective. There are always two perspectives in every argument, and both can be valid. Second, take the time and revisit the issue if you need to at an appropriate time, where you can sit down calmly and discuss a resolution. Number three, fight clean, attacking the situation rather than attacking your spouse's character or personhood. Is important to remember because you can't recover from a scar that is an attack to the person's character, but you can always recover when the situation is resolved if you focus your fight on the situation. Last thing we want to talk about is the um, you want to be able to describe the situation and how that makes you feel to your partner. One effective way to communicate how you feel is to use an I statement. For example, I feel unloved. When the sink is still full of dirty dishes, when I get home from work late, I would like you to help with the dishes, or you can say it kindly. Please help me with the dishes when I'm not home by a certain time. This allows your spouse to be able to recognize there are some things that you need help with and how distressed you are in response to that、uh, event. When using I statements, you're taking accountability for your own feelings while also explaining the behavior you don't like from your spouse. Focus on the behavior and not their character. This is meant to provide you with the 10,000 foot view of the overall principles and and things you want to consider, the tools you want to consider in your marriage. Um, we are going to do one other video where we talk about very specific techniques. It's called Four Pitfalls of Communication, and will be coming to you soon. If you have any comments, any questions at all, you want to、um, put that in your comment, and we will try the very best we can to address them for you. We thank you for subscribing to our channel, and we hope that this information has been helpful to you. And we look forward to talking with you again very soon.